Hello and welcome to the 36 video in this series programming HS Engine in JavaScript. So this video will start now making our make move function. The first thing we need to do is to go into devs.js and above the well below the piece index definition here, so above our information for our move, we're just going to add in and I'm going to paste in a couple of definitions. One is a simple definition is simply index by color, which king piece can be found. This will be used at the end of make move. And I'd recommend downloading the code here and just pasting in. It's quite a big array coming here and it's going to be it's called a castle permission array. And you'll notice that everything is set to 15 apart from these six squares in the middle here. And these squares are at the locations of A8H8 here and A1H1 and also E1 and E8. And the way these will be used is simply each time we make a move, the castle permission, let's say CP here, will be bitwise anded with the castle perm array on the from square. And what that has the effect of is, you remember that our castling permission is in four bits like this, so 15 when all of the permissions are set, and the first two bits here are the I say I th no. The last two bits here are the white. Yeah, the, the last bit, the least significant, is the white king castling, and the next bit here is the white queen castling. So that's one and two. Well, say that the king moved the white king, then we would be a bitwise ending with the value of twelve, the castle permission. So if the castle permission had a value of fifteen, and we bitwise ended that with the value of twelve then we would get the result 12, which effectively leaves our castle permission looking like this. So it's removed the castling permissions for white. And the same with if the rook moved, then it would re on a1, it would remove the queenside castling permission because we would end with 14 and so on. That should be fairly simple to understand. And we do that every time we move a piece in make move to be able to incrementally update the castling permission. So once this array is added, we can go into make move and start writing the make move function. And I'm going to do this with quite a bit of copy and paste to get the whole thing done in this video. I hope it doesn't go too quickly, but it's better to get this done in one chunk so we don't lose the thread of what's going on. So I'm going to name the function make move, and it's going to take the argument move. And at the start of the function, we're going to store some values inside a variable. And that reminds me something seeing the from here. I think when I set up the move piece, well, I know when I set up the move piece function here, I had from in capitals here. Well, you need to change this obviously to lowercase from. And I found this out um, in preparation for this video where I'd put in the make move function and just double checked in the browser that we did indeed make a move without any errors and it found this um, typo error in here. So sorry about that. That should be a lowercase from here. You've probably already done that yourself anyway. So back to our make move function. The next thing we need to do is we need to store inside our new history array our position key before we do anything else in the position. So spoke in the last video about the history array. If this was the first move of the game, his play would effectively be naught. So we'd be storing at the index of naught the current game board key in that way. And that we want to deal with the case of some special moves in the position. So the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at whether the move was an on passant capture. So if the move bitwise ended with our on passant capture flag is non-zero then we know that the capture was on passant. And that means that if you follow the rules of chess, which I hope you are at least a little bit, is that we have to remove the pawn that is one rank below where we captured to. So behind the pawn effectively. So for white that is at the two square minus ten and for black that is at the two square plus ten. So we simply write then our clear please function at the two minus ten for white. And then for black, we'll simply be saying else and clear piece at 2 plus 10, like so. So that sorts out the on person capture. Otherwise, we could have the situation where we have a castling move, which again we have a flag for, which is why we set it inside the generate moves. So if that's non-zero, then we need to move the rook, because remember we generate the move moving the king, so e1, g1 or something. And if in the case of e1, g1, 
we would need then to move the rook from h1 to f1. So what we'll do is we'll do a switch statement and have a look at which square is the 2 square because this will tell us what kind of castling move was made. And say for example e1 c1 was played, so queenside castling, then we'll move the rook from a1 to d1. And I'm sure you get the idea, we can drop the switch cases in for all of the other squares as well. And we end up with this where we move the appropriate rook depending on what kind of castling move was made. If you're in doing some debugging, you would probably put in a default here a statement as well to go to the console to say something has gone very wrong, we've made a castling move to a non-valid two-square for the, for the king. Okay, so now we've dealt with our special moves, we need to deal with the en passant square. I'm just going to close off the make move function there with a close bracket here. And say in the previous move, the opponent had made a pawn start move. So say back had made e7, e5, and e6 at the moment would be the en passant square. We need to now reset that en passant square um, to zero. But before we do that, when we set this square in the previous move, that en passant square would have been hashed into the hash key. So if an en passant square is set, we need then to hash it out of the hash key now. So if it's not equal to no square, the en passant square currently, before doing anything with the current move, then we'll hash out that en passant key. So it's no longer in there because it's about to be reset and then may indeed by our move be set again, in which case we'll hash in the new square. Our next thing we need to do is quite simple. It's we need to clear out our game board. That's clear out, sorry. We need to set up all of the values at our current history player index for the information. So what move we're making, 50 move rule, the en passant square, and the castling permission. And note, the en passant square still hasn't been set to no square. It's still there from the previous move. So we We'll do that after we've stored this information inside our history array here. And this is used, you'll see in the take move then, to reset the board to its previous state. I'll scroll down a bit so we've got some more space. And I'll just scroll the bottom down a bit so we've got even more. Good. OK. So next thing we can deal with now, finally, is the castling permission, like I said. And as I said before, we're going to do our bitwise and with the from and the to, because we might have the case where a rook, say, on h1 is captured by a piece. So in that case, we're going to alter the castling permission in that way as well, because obviously if a black piece captures the rook on a1, then white can no longer castle queenside. But the from square won't have been a1, so we need to bitwise and also the to square in this way to update our casting permission from this castle perm array we added to devs.js. And now finally, because we've hashed out our en passant square if it was set, we've stored it if it was set in our history, we can now set the en passant square to no square. The next thing we can do, we have to think about as well, is the castling permission. Casting permission may have changed here. So that means that before we do anything with the casting permission, we actually need to hash out the current castling permission make the changes, there might well have been none because the from and to weren't the the non-15 squares and we hash in the new position, the castling permission. So if it's the same, we'll end up with the same key status as before, but if it's changed, then it's been changed appropriately for the castling permission. And you can already see why the order you do things in this function becomes quite critical to maintain the integrity of the hash key and also why we've written this checkboard function in the last couple of videos to make sure we well, to, to, to place that into a debugging mode at the end of this function to check that everything is correct. The next thing we need to do is we need to get the piece that was captured in the in the move, if any. Remember in our move this is set to pieces.empty if nothing is captured. And now what we can also do is increase our 50 move rule by 1. And then, now we've done that, we can say that if the captured is not empty, so we captured a piece, then we'll clear this piece from the board. And remember, it's critical to do this before you actually move the piece being moved on the board, because otherwise you'll be clear, clearing off the wrong piece. So imagine we're capturing a knight on e4 with a pawn on d3. If we move the pawn on d3 
to the two square, then we would actually be clearing from here the pawn on d3. But what we want to do is we want to clear the knight, sorry, the pawn on that goes to e4. We actually want to clear the knight that's been captured on e4 first, and then later on move the pawn from d3 to e4, which is why, first of all, before we do any moving of pieces, we clear the piece that's been captured, and because a capture's been made, we set the 50 move rule back to zero. Now, finally, because we've stored all of our information inside our history array, we can also increase our his play and also the gameplay. And now we have to deal with the situation where the a pawn has moved, because a pawn move can do a couple of things. One is it can, well, it'll reset the 50 move rule to zero. And the other thing is, is if the move was a pawn start move, so the M flag PS, then we need to set the appropriate en passant square. So I'll just drop in now the code just for checking whether it's a pawn. So it's fairly simple stuff that we've seen very similarly before. So if the piece is a pawn, on game board pieces from, note we haven't actually moved the piece yet from on the game board. If it's true, then the 50 move rule goes back to zero. And now I'll drop in the en passant code here. Now, I'm sorry if this is going a little bit too quickly, but I'd like to get this completed with a description and not take an hour typing all of this out at my slow typing rate. So what we say here is, like we did much, well, exactly the same as we did for the en passant move made and the castling move made, we now say here that if the move bitwise ended with our pawn start is non-zero and the side was white, then we have to set the en passant square at our from plus 10 in the case of white. So if we did a2 to a4, then we'd be setting a3 as the en passant square. Otherwise, with black, it's obviously in the minus 10 direction from the from square. And now, because we've set an en passant square, we can hash this new en passant square into our hash key. So what we're doing here, and this can sometimes be a little bit confusing with the en passant square hashing here, is basically we're saying we're only hashing the en passant square in and out when it's actually not equal to no square. Otherwise, we just leave it alone, just as we do when we generate our board key in board.js, wherever it is, our position key here. Here you can see that we're only putting something into the position key when the en passant square is not no square. And this is where this, again, this checkboard function becomes useful because you can make sure that the hash key remains consistent and your functions and everything are in the right place by calling that. So now we've dealt with the castling permission, we've dealt with the piece being captured, it's been cleared off, we've cleared off anything that was captured by an en passant capture, we've moved the rook in the case of a castle, and we're finally at the stage now where we can actually move the piece we're intending to move with the move on the board. So we now call our move piece and move it from and to. And the next thing we, we deal with is the promotion. And the reason we're doing the promotion after we've moved the piece is because obviously we want to switch out the piece on the two square, which in our case would be the pawn, for the piece that it's promoted to. And obviously if we did that before, then things will be in the wrong order again. So the first thing we need to do is use our promoted function to get the promoted piece and store it in PR piece in this case. And if it's not equal to pieces.empty, then it was a promotion move. Now, of course, I could have dropped this function straight in here, but for clarity, I've made this var here. So if the promotion piece is not empty, then it was a promotion. So we clear the pawn on the two square, and then we add the promotion piece on the two square. And again, the order of these lines of code here is critical for things actually to be correct. And now we've done actually everything we need to do on the game board. We've actually made our move, we've done everything we need to do. So the last thing we need to do is switch the side. And when we switch the side, then we can hash the side correctly into the key. And now one last little thing of the make move. At the moment you've realized from the generate moves function we're generating all of what are called suedo legal, legal moves on the board. They're not looking at whether we're going to leave the king in check or not. And this is what we're going to do here. So we're going to say that if king is in check 
or kinf in my case, is in check, then we're going to return false. Otherwise, we'll return true. And the way we find out if the king is in check is the reason why we've added into defs.js our definition for the kings here. So we're going to say if square is attacked and the square where the side we've just moved, which is why we stored side in a variable because now the game board side has changed. So we're going to say that if the king for the side that did the move is attacked by the current side because the side was changed, then return false. Otherwise, we'll return true. So I'll just drop that in here like this. Otherwise, return true. Now, the only other thing I need to add in here is inside a comment for now is take move. Because we'll take, we haven't written take move yet, but we'll take the move back if the move was illegal. And we'll uncomment this when we finished writing our take move. So that's actually it for the complete make move function. Like I said, it's it's quite involved and the trickiest thing really is making sure that you've got the order of everything correct. And you can probably appreciate now why I've put the moving, adding and clearing of a piece code into separate functions. It would be pro it would be faster to put these inside make move, but it makes the function in my opinion much much too large and readable and pretty difficult to uh, find bugs in and make changes. So the last thing I want to do now then is inside main, we've got here, and I've already set up, you can see, we've we've got where we generated our moves. We printed the move list, printed the piece lists. I've got in there, I can't remember if that was in in the last video, but it's maybe it's come from stuff I was checking in preparation for the video, and called checkboard. And now I'm saying just brutally make the first move on our move list, because we know that because we generated the first list, that'll be A2, A3 just to show it, print the board, and then I'm calling checkboard. So I'm just going to get the browser then and just refresh what I've done here. And uncall reference, true is not defined in 143. Have I forgotten to write bool? Yes, I have, whoops. Sorry about that. I'll just put bool.true and save and just refresh the browser. Okay, good. So if I just drag the browser into view, what you can see here is, if I scroll up a bit and down, we've got our game board here, and then we've printed the move list out. We'll get all rid of all this in a bit when we don't need it anymore. The piece lists are just printed because I was checking the piece lists are okay. And now the move's been made, and you can see the pawn has gone to A3. And crucially, our checkboard function hasn't given us any warnings or errors down here, so the hash key is consistent, castling permission. The side to move is now black. So it looks like our make move, make move function is working okay. And in the once we've done the take move, we're then going to write something called a perfed test, which is where you'll see the testing of the thorough rigorous testing of our make and unmake over hundreds of millions of positions and moves in a tree to check that everything is bug free and working okay. But that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.